research and discovery. Futurists. More and more beekeepers all over the world are witnessing a sharp drop in the number of bees they keep. In the United States, 25% of honeybees vanished in 2006 and 2007. And in several European countries, the situation is possibly even worse. This phenomenon called colony collapse disorder not only has serious consequences on the balance of nature and the pollination of plants, but also on the economy. Here's the testimony of a French honey producer. Il y a des départements comme l'Isère, le Lyonnais, euh, l'Alsace aussi où, où j'ai des échos. Où... We are losing a lot of bees, sometimes more than 50% of the colonies in regions like Alsace, Isère and around Lyon. Here we're losing about 25% of these insects during the year, 15% at the end of the winter. But this is quite normal. Bon, ça c'est des pertes bon assez assez normal. The European Union research project called BDOC has been looking into the problem since March. Together, 11 universities from nine different countries are working under the coordination of Professor Robin Moritz, one of the world's top experts in this field. The um, idea behind BDOC is to seek on three different research pillars, one aiming at uh, the diagnostics of diseases, so developing new easy tools for bee disease diagnostics, the other for developing strategies of disease prevention, and the third one is trying to develop novel treatments that may rely less on yet tedious chemical therapies that we have now. One of those lines of research is being studied at the Hohenheim University of Stuttgart. Under the guidance of Dr. Peter Rosenkrantz, the researchers are introducing toxins into groups of bees. They want to determine the combined effect of several elements together. First of all, we want to know uh, what is the real uh, effect of uh, combination of certain pesticides and uh, parasites. The second thing is to see how the colony can react, can handle these uh, exposures. A loss of biodiversity is one of the main suspected reasons for the loss of bees, along with excessive use of pesticides and pollution. What researchers are saying though is that several different factors working together can explain CCD. Colony collapse has many reasons, can have many reasons. We know the uh, biggest problem at the moment is varroa mite, but again, starving of honeybees, mismanagement, uh, additional pesticides, poor nutrition can also act together, uh, can really uh, create a, a situation where uh, a honeybee colony cannot survive anymore and will collapse. In Germany, at the Halle Wittenberg University, the research is focusing on genetics. They're putting bees' genetic makeup under the microscope, trying to understand which single gene is involved when a specific source of stress for the insect is active, whether it be illness, parasites, or pesticide. Dr. Bernhard Krauss is coordinating this research. The genome of the honeybee here has been sequenced a couple of years ago, so actually we know the whole genome. We know how it is written and the way the book is written, but we have not read it completely. We do not necessarily know which genes are involved in a given trait. So this is something which the biologists will be kind of busy with the next years and for some time to come, in fact. A 
multidisciplinary approach is the only way to solve the problem. And like all European scientific projects, it's also a multinational approach. kind of the knowledge and the expertise of many people from Europe which work in different fields of honeybee biology. We have people which are expert for pesticides, we have people which come from the biochemistry side, we have people which really work in the kind of applied field of honeybee beekeeping and actually people like us who work in bee genetics. Another of these branches of research is based in Avignon, France. Here, Yves Leconte's team are studying a special kind of local bee that is resistant to some sources of stress. In Avignon and in the west of France, bee populations are resisting not just parasites, but all sorts of diseases, even though they are not being treated against them. What we want to know is why they are surviving and others not. It's a very useful way for us to get to the genetic root of the problem. The project aims to help beekeepers survive CCD. It will take time to solve the problem once and for all, but the team is in it for the long haul. We don't eliminate the problems, but we give the beekeeper a tool to avoid the problems. I think this is really the realistic goal that we have in those three years. And the long run will really to eliminate the problem, which will require breeding work for resistant honeybees. I think this is sort of the scheme that we have in mind when uh, we work in the bee dog. Finding a way to protect bees means working to protect natural balance. Bees are a delicate microcosm of the health of our planet. Problems for them means problems for all of us somewhere down the line. As Einstein put it, no more bees, no more pollination, no more plants, no more animals, no more man. <laughs>